to my car today. Uh, it's been a long time since I actually did a video for a while. Um, I picked these up right down my work, Vance Auto Parts. Then with the Thermal Quiet. Um, kind of kind of mixed mix feelings all these. Um, at the moment, I'm not going to be doing anything with the rotors. I'm just going to be doing the slap on new pads. Um, I've been having a lot of like squeaking and squealing issues with the OEM brake pads. Uh, so I'm going to take a look at this and we're going to see what's wrong with them. But for what I paid for these, it was a simple deal. Switch them out. Basic square. Two implants. Uh, these ones don't have the uh, integrated shims on them, which is a basic standard shim. And then the rear. It's just a little baby version of it. Rear part number MX1368. And the front one, a QC101. Uh, this is just, that's just your part number right there. So that's, that's this pad, and the 101 is this pad. Um, so for tools, I mean, what I've seen is just, I'm just going to need a punch. I'll get down here, grab my punches. Probably going to need like one of these thin ones here. Hammer, tap that out. Um, need a jack of the car. Jack, jack stands as always. I actually have four total, so I'm going to be able to do, get the car all the way off the ground. But I'll do front at the time. I might just do the fronts today. And then we need an uh, impact to take off. And I need a 21 millimeter. Now me, it's my car, I have these good old trusty thin wall sockets I've got at Harbor Freight. And to put on, we're going to use a torque wrench. Because everything goes on by hand, off by a tool. Got a torque wrench to use for it too. So we'll try out the digital torque wrench on that. Bam. Now this is a uh, Lysel tool. This is a four, made for quad two or three ever piston caliper. It's a uh, goes right in that caliper like that. And you squeeze and it pulls itself apart. This makes it so you can do depress the caliper without with it being on the car. I usually typically use this tool right here. Uh, this is a blue point, but everyone makes it simply put it in the caliper and you unwind it and they spread. Um, great tool, use it for everything, but I can't use this while it's on the car. Right? I'm going to use this. And I tell you the truth, I don't know the part number on this. Um, you can look at it, they only make three different variations. They make this single and dual quick tip on the uh, on the wheels aftermarket got these like sweet little Mitsubishi valve caps now the thing is is they're metal you're not supposed to put metal caps on metal valve stems so uh, if you can tell there's a lot of like gunk and stuff that is actually dialectic grease uh, the same stuff we're going to be putting on on the uh, brake components and stuff, I use it for everything. Uh, it just keeps everything, keeps that corrosion, the oxidation between the two dissimilar metals away. So this is the brake. This ain't. This light ain't doing nothing. All right. Uh, two pins hold these in. They're going to get punched out in this direction and towards the car. This is a spring tension spring. It loops over. So really you can get knock out this one. Spring comes out. And this one's come out. The pad's going to pull straight up. Uh, like I said, I'm going to keep the caliper on the vehicle and just change the pads. Uh, the rotor is fine. Um, not down into the rotor. I'm not having any type of rotor concerns. I had these prep pads that were going to clean the rotor. Soapy water, warm soapy water uh, is actually like the perfect um, cleaning to get the uh, soot and metal out of the rotor material so you have a fresh new start. Alright, so uh, 
quickly glance at this one. That'll work. Now I'm chipping this paint. I'm just going to hold this here. So I'm going to get a thinner one here. Do that hole. There's the press fit right there. This is just a basic punch and chisel set. Which does not have to be a snap one like mine it just happened. This is what I have. I'm gonna grab a pair of rag. And these are gonna put the rag right there. Protect the paint. Channel locks. We're going to clean up this ball is what it's expanded now squeeze down when it goes in there that spring go u-shaped so loops underneath and it's going to bend down and give you that tension there set that all aside start tapping out the other bottom one I just went from a bigger one to a little one to go farther in a the hole there. Now this one without the spring tension is pretty easy to get through. Alright, there's that. Now this is all going to be squeezed in there. Not going to be able to really do it by hand. <sighs> Top of these. This has that caulking gun style. And this just comes right out. Has our shims there. It's cut in half. Another half now, that's it. That's all Mitsubishi wanted. So these are those rotor wipes I was telling you about. That's uh they're right up there, right by the register. Pretty snazzy. It's you can use one pad per front axle. It's kind of like a soapy type feel to it. You can see it's clean my hand pretty well. Just gonna get the rotor wiped down. This is the, uh, this was actually the outboard pad. Let's take a look at the inboard pad. This one's going to be the one that wears the most. Now, granted, they still have plenty of life left onto them. Uh, you can pick this up. There's a little bit of deposits in it, which, I mean, is normal. Um, chafering's still there, so I don't know why I was getting such a hell of a squeal from them. Now, granted, I'm probably going to still get some sort of noise from the ceramics in the morning until they warm up. Some of my italics do offer better breaking, just more dust. Um, I very rarely take this thing to the track. Um, living in PA, there's not really that much time. Now, 
still have these have that same generic background there. I think I'm actually going to reuse these shims if possible with the direction here. They have facing towards the front. So that shim would go like that. This would be the front shim. I'm going to try and reuse these. The fact that they were on there, and they should, you know, they should be put back on. In my opinion, I mean, there is a reason why they're there. Um, I'm going to clean everything off with a little bit of brake clean. As you can see, it's not that, that harsh of a dust. It's all coming right off my hand. And I'm going to use. I have it in a can here. It's easy squeeze. It's going to come up. We're going to put the dielectric here on the back. I'm going to set this shim right on top of that. I'm going to put dielectric there. Slide is pretty bad. Um, I'll just give you that gasoline type feel if you ever got gas on your hands. I'm going to clean that off so now nice and dry. They came from the factory. I guess they're not. Like I said, I'm just going to clean this up. Now this one has an air on the other direction, so this one's going to be that rear shim. See, it wouldn't make sense that you know, it would be up. You know, the majority of the time the wheel is spinning forward, so that's going to be in that direction there. Just like that. I watched a couple other videos. I haven't seen any of the shims in there, so I don't know if I saw a couple of videos of people putting them on. No one's ever even put them back on, so that might be something new. This is a 2014. I don't know. The Mitsubishi put them there. There's a reason why. Well, it's the same reason why I used that dielectric grease. I worked for Ford. And at the dealership, we would always put that there, and I asked why, because there's all those different, you know, products, and the purple stuff, the green brake lubricant, and it's the truth. I've never, ever seen a car from the factory come with, come with purple or green, um, gunk all over the brakes. It's always a, a clear silicone. And months and months and months ago, when you take pads off from a factory car, this silicone is still there. So, there's a reason. So, that's why it's going back on. Now we're going to be doing the inboard pad first. There's our silicone. Spread it around there. And so this is going in this way. We want the shim. It's going to be the wrong shim. We want this shim. Set that right on top. We're going to use a little bit more dialectic on the outside of that. And that shim. And this stuff is a little bit stickier than uh, your normal like purple stuff so it will actually hold the shim kind of in place that you get in there. Sorry about that. Slide this in. It's going to be a little bit of a tight fit. Shim's going to want to walk up so you're going to hold your fingers right there at the shim. Push that in there. And that's in there nice and secure. Do the same thing with the outboard pad. Put the camera this way. Right there, get some glue. Smear it around. As you have two main pressure points of a piston there and a piston there on both of them. So you gotta cover this whole shim area. Set this. 
there. You can see the outline of where the uh, caliper piston was. This in. So put our fingers right here over top of the shims because it's going to walk its way out. Alright, now the pads are installed. Now we have our trusty old pins here. We're going to give it a little bit of a coating that dielectric. Go in a little bit easier, keep everything flowing. Feed that through. And this is going to reach over there pretty easy. Okay, so now we're made contact to where this just needs tapped in from the back. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in. Dialectic right there. And we're going to loop that down underneath. So it's in position. And we're going to loop up here. Right in. Now we're going to have to push down on this. Get it over this. Now these things are, they have different areas where it gets thin and thick, so just kind of have to fight with it a little bit. I'm going to use the end of a screwdriver, so I'm not really hitting it too hard. I lied about that. Clean my hands off. I'm pulling that pad out just a little bit. Just trying to get this through the hole. Right, now we're started in the hole. Tap that in flush. And there's a little nipple that was out there before. So this is done. I typically turn it, make sure you don't hear no weird squealing and squeaking from it. And there you go.